Hey everyone, welcome back to my little home machine shop. So last week when I put up a video, I was explaining to you that I broke the probe tip on the end of my Sean probe. Now, I predominantly use this in the manual mill. I have another one, a Hamer, for my CNC. So the problem lies here, is that once you break the tip, obviously you need to replace it. So Artie from Live Tool sent me down a new replacement tip. Now it's not as simple as just unscrewing it and screwing it back on. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. What we need to do is to clock the tip in. So after we change the tip, we need to put it back in the spindle, use a finger DTI, so a dial test indicator, a finger, finger one, and ro gently rotate the spindle and make sure we clock it in. Now I'm going to bring the camera in close and I'm going to explain to you what I mean. Right, I've brought you in closer here so hopefully you can see it a little bit more accurately in the footage. Um, you'll notice that my probe uh, is being held by Farian a uh, high accuracy collet, an ER25 collet. Now if we look at the probe, at the top of the probe here, you'll see there's four grub screws. So one, two, three, and if I rotate it all the way back around here, four. All right. Now it's pretty much like dialing a four jaw chuck. So once you put it in the spindle, with your dial test indicator, you have to gently adjust, back these off, tighten them up, spin it until we get zero, zero on the dial. So let's put it in the spindle and let's have a crack at this. Now, if you haven't seen one of these style of probes before, let me show you a little bit about it. They're really, really good because you use them in a 3D space, so you can probe in the Y, X, and Z. Now, to give you an idea, if I grab the bottom of the tip here and push up, you'll notice that the dial gauge reads, it goes from 0 to 1.5 mil, but it also works if I put a lateral force on it. So I'm pushing in the Y axis at the moment, and you can see it moving both ways, and I can push it in the X as well. And it's quite fine, it's uh, in segments of 0.01 of a mil. Now replacing the tip is relatively easy. We just unscrew it here off the bottom of our probe. And there should be like a little, I think it's M3 or M4 thread on the bottom here. You should be able to see it in the camera if I put my finger behind it. The new one that I'm replacing with this is a ceramic tip. So it's made in Germany, there's a replacement tip. And here is what it looks like. And you can see we've got the ground ball, a ceramic shank. And the whole idea of that is that if you push too hard, it will snap the ceramic shank instead of damaging your dial. So to put this back in, we just pull it out. Okay, so this has got the thread still in it here. You can see here, so I'm gonna to have to take this out if I can't. Yep, there you go, it's just come out easily. And screw this one back in. And make sure that it goes up into the little recess. And nice little bite on there, not overly tight. And there's my new tip. So now we've got to clock it in. So I've got my finger dial set up and I've just got to bring that in till I touch the ball. I'm going to have to go up a little bit here in Z. And what I can do now, I can come in in Y, go across a little bit in X first, and then in with my Y gently till I bring that on the zero. Now, if I just gently rotate the spindle, now we're watching this dial here, not the probe dial. And as I gently rotate it, you see that the probe is out. So it has to be clocked back in. And it's approximately at half a millimeter. Now if we don't adjust this, we're gonna get an error when we use the probe, and it'll be out. Now you might ask, well, why you use this style of probe? Well, they're, I find them highly accurate. Additionally, they make life easier because they deflect, you don't have to uh, include the radius offset when you're probing. So if you use a wobbler, okay, or a, or a balls type beeper, 
probe. Um, whatever the size of the probe is, you have to account for the radius offset. On these, there's nothing. You clock it into zero, hit your DRO, do the next one, zero. Much faster, much quicker to set it up. Now, something I haven't explained to you is that if you're using one of these in a CNC machine, okay, and you break this tip, and after you do this setup, you're going to have to re uh, do all the tool heights in your CNC tool changer because the probe length will definitely change. Now, in a CNC land, you can do this in manual machining as well. You can actually, in your DRO, enter all your tool length offsets. Okay, I haven't done this on this machine, but on my CNC I do, of course, because you have to do it. So every tool offset is in relation to the length of this probe. That's something else you need to account for. So as I rot rotate this, you can see that when I go front to back, front to back's nearly spot on, right? But if I look at the sideways, okay, so this one here to around to this one is half a mil out. So the probe is sitting too far this way. So there's a little grub screw up the top here that I need to undo. Sorry, my hand is in the road. And they're quite tight, or well, they can be quite tight. And what I need to do now is to move this side back or over, all right? Bring that back, and you can see now I've gotten a lot closer, but I need to spend a little bit more time in clocking this in. I'm gonna bring you back in a minute. Um, this took me a little bit longer than what I expected. So you've got to continuously adjust these four screws. Now I've got it fairly close. I'm gonna leave it at that. I've been chasing my tail a little bit here today. And as you see, as I sweep it on the finger dong, it's very, very close. Now, keep in mind that my little DTI there, that little finger dial, that's a, a 0 0.01, so it's a 10 micron jeweled uh, dial gauge. So as I sweep it around here, I reckon that's, you know, depending on where it is, it can be anywhere between, you know, just under 10 microns. So, look, that's going to be good enough for me because watch this. If I just put a little bit of weight on this spindle, you can see the dial move, all right, if I just push on that. So, I suppose it could, you know, could be the spindle as well. Lots of things. So, I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it at that and start to use this probe. So what I'll do now, I'll give you a little demonstration on how the probe actually works. So the first thing, if we're going to probe this surface here, I'd uh, wind my stylus roughly into the centre and jog up. And as the probe touches, it will go around once, twice, and then as it comes up, to the third time on the zero you can see my two dials are zero zero and what I could do now I could set my DRO now that the DRO is set I can jog down and I'll pick up the y-axis now on that corner and of course, each time I'll bring my Z height to the same as it was before. Now it's a little bit off, but for the camera, you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna reset my Y axis on zero there. And then of course, remember to back off and don't go the wrong way, because that's how you break the probe. Cross now to the x-axis, and you can see I just went around the corner and back in again. And three, three turns, two needles on zero, zero, set my x-axis. Remember to back off and 
don't snap off your probe. Now, I don't have to account for the tip radius or anything like that, where if I was using a wobbler, okay, if I was using this edge or that edge, I'd have to account whatever the diameter is and split it by half and account for and adjust for it in my digital readout. So these are much quicker, but they're a lot more expensive too, okay? And they're fraught with danger because it's quite easy to break a tip and they're not that cheap to replace. I think the one for the Hamer that I bought recently, I picked one of these up off Amazon for about $65 as well. Now that I've brought the camera down here, you can see that I'm right on the edge of the block here. All my needles are on zero, the, big, the small one and the big one, and my DRR is on zero and I'm right in the corner. And these make your life so much easier. Uh, setting up jobs, and also finding positions of holes as well. So I'm going to be using this probe on that vintage engine cover to pick up the hole location uh, as I don't have a plan.